What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Lore, and before we begin, I'd like to make a shout out to Aries for allowing me to use his music, uh, make a shout out to the Discord chat, feel free to join in the link in the description below, or in the channel header, feel free, we can talk about gaming, lore, other things, it's easier to communicate that way as well, if you want to give me video recommendations or just talk overall, it's a lot easier to communicate. With that being said, there's not too much news today, um... I wanted to get the city series started up again. It's been a while since we've done them, and I said in the last video of the cities that I was going to be doing Morrowind afterwards and doing all the cities of Morrowind. So that's what I'm starting with today. Um, got a few community projects I'm working on as well. Uh, one about the Khajiit and one coming up about the Ekaviri. Uh, other than that, though, the army and navies are going. Those series are continuing on pretty strong. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to hop back into cities and we're going to kind of add some things to the mix. We're not just getting all army or all navy or all military stuff at once. We can get some other things and get some diversity in terms of topics. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. Today we're going to be talking about the city of Ebonheart. Ebonheart, or the Black City, is one of the eight major cities within the province of Morrowind and is the capital of the region of Stonefalls. Ebonheart, by tradition, has been the ancestral seat of power for House Rathim, whose lineage has ruled as Morrowind's greatest leaders, including Baron Zaya, Katraya, and Morrowind. Now, the city of Ebonheart sits on an island along the southern shores of the Inner Sea, which is a large body of water that separates the island of Vardenfell from the rest of Morrowind. Based on Ebonheart's geography and the layout of the Ascadian Isles on Vardenfell, it can be assumed that the island of Mar Ebonheart is in and was once part of the city of Avak and where it was located. The city of Ebonheart is small, to say at least. The town is built like a fortress and the center of the city is where most of Ebonheart's commerce com uh, occurs. The inner city has the town hall in the north overlooking the Argonian district and the inner sea. It has clear sight of Vardenfell. The eastern end has several homes and the local Ebony Flask Inn. The Fighters Guild tends to set up camp near the inn as well. The western end of town is where many of the residents live, as well as several house nobles. The local temple resides in the west wing as well. For the longest time, the temple was built to worship the False Tribunal, a group of ancient gods that had significant influence over Morrowind for years, and since the later years of its inception. The current gods that are worshipped are the House of Riklam Nations, which consist of Azura, Boethia, and Mephala. North of the temple is the dockyards, where the city fishers go to get their daily catch. North of the inner city is the Argonian district, the home of several Argonian slaves or former slaves that decided to stay within Ebonheart. Argonians during the Interregnum period planted a hissed sapling in the center of town. The Ebonheart outskirts in the south is where the local militia gathers as well as refugees of war or foreigners. The location of the Clockwork City is unknown. Sources say that it is somewhere within the, the Deshaun Plains near the city of Tyr. Sources have stated that the location of the compound is somewhere underneath the town of Ebonheart as well. The city-state of Ebonheart has been the city of House Rathim for many years, being the house that held many high kings of Morwen for many years, and owning lucrative mines throughout the province. Amidst the Skyrim conquests, Ebonheart was conquered by the Nords until it was retaken via guerrilla warfare by the nobility of the Rathim. Under King Kron Kronin and his three sons, Cruthius, Sephon, and Morlin, eventually Cruthius assumed the throne and would eventually pass it on to his younger brother Morlin. Sephon was not his legitimate heir and was unable to continue uh, from Cruthius's reign. I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing now if I'm butchering any of these names. I probably am. Ultimately, Morlin's daughter, Lien Rathim, had become the queen of Ebonheart. Having twin sons that were made joint heirs, the seat of the High King was left vacant and temporary, in, a, in, in a favor of a temporary war leader. Mornhold was given the Staff of Chaos as, Siphon's, as it was Siphon's birthplace, and the rivalry between the two city-states had grown. In 572 of the Second Era, the so de Snow Demons of Kamal invaded the continent of Tamriel and ravaged the northern provinces uh, from as far as the Talvani Peninsula to East Marsh and Skyrim. At one point, the Snow Demons besieged the city of Windhelm and moved southwards near the town of Ebonheart, near the site which is known as Vivek's Antlers. Snow Demons were surrounded, for, were surrounded from all sides, to the west from the Nordic army led by Druun Skald King and the Shade of Wulfhart the Ash King, to the east were the Dumiri army led by Tenval and Daril and Almalexia of the Tribunal, and to the south were the Argonians that were led by Viscanon. Yet I mean, I 
seriously think I butchered that. These combined forces managed to defeat the Snow Demons and lead them back to Akavir. Now, the battle that ended the second Akaviri invasion was known as the Battle of Stonefalls. Following the events of the battle, the leaders of the defensive force created the first Ebonheart Pact, an alliance consisting of Nords of Eastern Skyrim, the Dunmer of Morrowind, and the Argonians of Blackmarsh. The name of the alliance was created because it was founded in the city of Ebonheart. During the Interregnum of 582 in the Second Era, the region of Stonefalls was at war with the Daggerfall Covenant, and as a result, many settlements were attacked during the conflict. Places such as Davin's Watch and Fort Zarin were assaulted by the Covenant. The war had not yet reached the city of Ebonheart, but the events in town would have led to the fall of the Ebonheart Pact. The city was ruled by Drathus or Thrall, and back when the settlement was under the control of House Dress, parts of the Covenant Armada landed on the shores of Vivax Antlers, which is not far from Ebonheart. And yet, the people of Ebonheart have squabbles with each other and would not cooperate to, the, to defeat the invading force. Orthral tasked an outlander known as the Vestige to bring the people together in their time of need. With the help of the Vestige, the Densians of the Ebonheart Pact came together uh, to help the city of Ebonheart, and they would fight the Daggerfall Covenant. A Dunmer known as Raphael Urano, was, uh, who was conducting disagreements with the townsfolk, uh, was conducting the disagreements with townsfolk, and he was acting suspiciously throughout the city. Althral tasked the Vestige to investigate his recent activities to see this connection between him and the Covenant Armada. Urano went to a shack on the Ebonheart dockyards and left several minutes later. The Vestige would uncover a magical book and an apparition of a Covenant officer. Urano was working with the Covenant and brought them to the Ebonheart through messages and the information leaked and Urano was killed by the Vestige. The information was leaked and Urano was killed by the Vestige. I said that in a fragment, which was kind of weird. In 583 of the Second Era, Lord Vivac of the Tribunal traveled to the city of Ebonheart and was enthralled by the city's atmosphere. He studied the city's archite architecture and wandered the streets in awe. He took notes in his notebook and notes about every detail he witnessed in the city. His time there left behind his uh, bleh, his time there left behind schedule and his entourage in distress. After several hours of studying, Vivac wanted to build another Ebonheart on Vardenfell. He felt that the island located southwest of Vivac City was fitting for the location. It was that day construction of the city of Ebonheart and Vardenfell began. During his reign as Emperor of Tamriel, Pelagius Septim III married Katria Rathim of House Rathim to establish relations with the Third Empire in the city of Ebonheart. Since Ebonheart was nearby and nearby the city of Mournhold, it was necessary since Ebonheart was also against the Empire during the War of the Red Diamond. It was around this time Pelagius III was known as Pelagius the Mad, so his reputation wasn't quite great. And since his reign of the Kingdom of Solitude had gone sour, many people felt a little, um, well I would say a little sketched out to say the least. Katria was one of the few people to hide Pelagius' madness from the rest of the Empire. While Pelagius III was playing, uh, playing his toes like madman, like the madman he was, Katria and the Elder Council would control the Empire. Pelagius was eventually taken in asylum at the city of Torval, and Katria ruled the Empire from the Imperial City. Pelagius would later pass away in the Isle of Betany at the Temple of Kinnereth. During the Imperial Silicurum of 389 of the Third Era to 399 of the Third Era, Emperor Euro Septim VII was killed, or was imprisoned along with Talon Warhaft in the Deadlands by Yagur Tharn. Tharn planned, uh, planned for months to, recap to capture the throne, he was able to achieve this in 10 years. Tharn had this uh, powerful weapon called the Staff of Chaos, and he split it into 9 pieces and scattered them across Tamriel. <coughs> Excuse me. And one of the pieces came to, you guessed it, Ebonheart. And at the time, the city of Ebonheart was ruled by King Kasek, and the Eternal Champion would have to go this way. And now I would, uh, go a little bit more into it, but, like all of them, like, I, I honestly, this is like all cities, I, I guess I could do a recap, because every city, it seems, this, this seems to come up, I've been doing. Um, so, the staff got split up into put in multiple, multiple places, and the Eternal Champion had to go to each point and recover them, and the Ebonheart, city of Ebonheart had one of the nine pieces. And so, when he returned, when he reached the city of Ebonheart uh, on their quest to the final piece of the staff, residents told the Champion to visit King Kasek, 
to see if he knew of the location. The champion arrived into Cossack's domain and the king gave him a proposition. The king asked him that the champion retrieve the hammer of Garan and he would give the location of the beast. It's probably Garan, I'm not sure if the hammer of Garan. The warrior traveled to the Black Gate and took the hammer of Garen, and they took the king of the, uh, they took the took the hammer to the king, and in return, the king pointed the way to the Red Mountain. The champion was able to take the final piece, and then they ventured to the Imperial City to confront Jagger Tharn. And that is it. That is all we have on the city of Ebonheart.